welcome back for a brand new episode of The Witching Hour. Every episode of The Witching Hour is an exciting episode, but this is a really exciting one because it's our best of 2019. Yes. Best horror movies of 2019. How are you yeah. doing, Haley? I'm good. I'm very, um, I'm in that best of 2019 mode where nothing makes sense and everything is a constantly changing list. And yeah. If your heart is full of love for movies and your brain is full of pain with trying to express <laughs> it in the best way. You just expressed that feeling the most accurately like that you possibly could because Thank that you. is exactly what I carry <laughs> around with me right now on a day-to-day -day basis. And I yes. feel like the fact that it's end of decade too is really messing with my head because I can't think of both things at the same time. <laughs> Like, why, why couldn't we all just, you know, band together and agree that we would cover best of the decade in like the middle of the year to give me a little breathing room between that and doing best of 2019? Then you're missing a whole half a year of the decade. So let's push it to the middle of 2020. <laughs> there you go. And th now that, that way, makes way more sense Because that way we all me. have like, if it was dead, dead smack in the middle, we would all have six months to really sit and think yeah. about our list. So maybe we'd all be happier Make with them for that. reasonable choices. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so we're not we're not necessarily going to count down our our top tens in order. We're going to kind of bounce around here and discuss the year that was 2019 in horror. Um, first thing I want to ask you though is, like, what what do you think about horror 2019? Do you think it was a good year for the genre, or do you think there's room for improvement? I think it's a combo of both. I always, I don't know the the. As much as it seems to torment us, the process of putting together these lists always gives me some insight into mm -hmm. the year that was. And this year, coming up with a, a concise list didn't feel as hard as it did for me the last three or four years. It wasn't like I was cutting off, you know, tens of titles I also mm -hmm. adored, which seemed to be a problem for me in the last few years. Um, I, I very quickly was able to spot, you know, like 10 or 15 movies that were in consideration yeah. as opposed to looking at a list of 30 and being like, I don't know, man. Mm. So I think it was good, but I don't, I don't, for me, what I like, it didn't seem to resonate as hard as previous years have. How about for you? With certain things, yes. I feel like I'm, I'm extremely enthusiastic about my top five. Okay. And then I really, really, really like my top 10. And then I also like a lot my top 20. Sure. But looking at looking at the list of favorites and just, you know, taking a step back and assessing it overall, I am very excited by, you know, the mix of original films, the mix of things that really popped for me on a streaming service. Then the, the you know, there's some adaptations. There's a sequel in here. I, I don't know. It's just like a very nice variety here. There's horror comedy. There's, there's super like dark, dreary stuff that I loved. I, just, I, I really, really take to the mix here. Mm -hmm. And it also really excites me for, for festivals that I love. When I look at this list, I saw one, two, three at film festivals and they just really stuck with me. So it, you know, it says to me that, when you want to go find a good horror movie, go to South by Southwest. Overlook is on the rise because one of these movies that I saw at Overlook that I bet you anything most people out there have not seen is in my top 10 only because I was made aware of it through that festival. And right. that's the kind of stuff I love to notice. Oh, yeah. Festival, I that's my favorite stuff. The I little know. weirdos. I know. God love the little weirdos. Mm. And they're my faves. Um it's been, I mean, yeah, I'm not trying to suggest in any way it hasn't been a good year. I think perhaps the opposite is that I'm suggesting the last decade was such a wealth um, that perhaps I'm curious to see what the next decade looks like. As am I. Yeah. Uh, you know, it feels shifty. It feels yeah. like a shifty year, not like sketchy, like no, I don't no, trust no, this year, but like a little shift in the industry. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about with, yeah. you know, the Conjuring franchise, for example. It's just, and, and if anyone hasn't listened to last week's episode, it's an assessment of the decade with a couple predictions of, you know, changes to come in the new year. And, you know, you could say, you know, the Conjuring is bound to have a shift. You could say people are going to have to step back and reassess the value of Stephen King adaptations and exactly mm -hmm. how to go about that because of how successful or not some of them have been this year. And also, you know, original horror and also the value of having something go straight to streaming. I mean, an, a good example of this year is uh, Little Monsters. There's a movie that premiered at Sundance and it's great. And then it, yeah, I think it had a, maybe a limited theatrical run, but 
it was mainly available for people to watch on Hulu. And yeah. I think we need to start shifting our thinking as far as the value of streaming service features go, because like I've got a, a good deal of them here. Oh, yeah, and that's like, I mean, I would say Little Monsters is probably the most high profile example, yeah. but also, I, mm, I'm like, am I confusing movies from last year? Definitely at least two really phenomenal standouts came out direct to Shudder this year. Okay. Um, last year, I feel like they had an even more absurd wealth of standouts go direct to Shudder, but... Um, I'm having like a brain meld between the two years or it's happening. Understandable. Hopefully I can, if, if you shout out titles at some point, I could probably help you sort them. Well, no, I think I'm figuring it out, but it's like Satan Slaves was last year. Terrified was last year. Revenge was last yeah. year. And I'm thinking of Tigers Are Not Afraid uh, and One Cut of the yes. Dead are this year. Yes. I, I sorted it out, but they all kind Great. of had Double a little done. soup there for a second. <laughs> um, do you want to just jump into some of our favorites? Yeah, sure. All right. I'm going <sighs> to fully will admit this i'm not totally set on this order yo <laughs> like i don't have any i'm still stressing about it but the one that's on the bottom of my top is this even 10 i think this is 10 hold on one two three four <laughs> five six seven eight it is done Good. if you saw me like shifting where i put this line all morning it was ridiculous oh i haven't uh, even established a 10 i just have a list of things to talk about if i did do my number 10 it would be that movie that i saw at overlook this year and it's headcount mm -hmm. and i i can't recommend that movie enough i am borderline obsessed with not just creepy pastas but the idea of taking a terrifying legend and watching it evolve over the course of a feature film i think there's just a wealth of storytelling possibilities there and especially when that legend evolves right alongside a character and that character's journey is so directly tied to that kind of like evil entity or whatever it is and headcount is something that i think really digs into those storytelling opportunities so so well it's low budget it's a first feature and I I walked out of that that was one of those movies that it was like a pet cemetery thing where I walked out on such a high because I loved it so much and I couldn't wait to run around and tell everybody about it so do check out Headcount I still gotta watch that I think it's on Prime right now I think I think or did it go away I don't know it might have it's um I did I miss the window I gotta on. watch that Headcount I missed that one movie bad person no, <laughs> it's a bit, I, well, it's available on Amazon prime. Um, nice. and you can also buy it on uh, Google play or you could buy it on YouTube, but it's also streaming on Netflix. So, nice. oh, is it not streaming on prime? That's what I meant. No, no. I think you can just buy it okay. for three ninety nine, dollars which is then, well worth the purchase. But if you have Netflix, you can watch it right now. Yeah, for I no think it was cost. on prime before it was on Netflix. I, Cause that, that yeah. rang a bell when you said it, but yeah. I know I've recommended it to some people on Netflix too. So I should have been able to <laughs> recall that off the top so, of my once head. Once again, streaming. I also um, don't think we have internet right now. <laughs> oh, hey, how about that? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Hopefully it's okay. we're recording. Um, yeah, I didn't catch that one, but I do, before I forget, there was like a smaller sort of, I don't know why it's in my, like in my head in the same sort of category, yeah. probably just because it was a festival movie that people were talking about, but that didn't quite cross over the threshold into the mainstream conversation but harpoon was a really fun like dark friends go away I and have a harpoon, bad time but i heard a lot about it um yeah that one was that one was okay. fun and cheeky and violent and and just kind of rooted in not not like you were saying at all anything to do with um creepypasta but more just these messed up human relationships that get real bad when you get stuck together okay and you thought you were gonna have a fun vacation i would like to see that rivalries yeah. dark secrets and sexual tension emerge when three best friends find themselves stranded on a yacht in the middle of the ocean oh that's my kind of movie yeah it's fun i'm so excited yeah it makes, that me, one... it makes me think a little bit of sweetheart too yes um i personally love sweetheart a lot more because i thought that sweetheart had really interesting things to say in the midst of that like seafaring horror yeah whereas harpoon i think is just a more like interesting character study without commentary necessarily it's got the kid from turbo kid in it yeah now it just like bumped up on my <laughs> must watch cool list one. even higher i love him yeah cool. that, i don't know why that just popped in my head but that one wouldn't be like on my my theoretical top 10 yeah, list yeah. i haven't made okay. yet Okay, but give it me, would give be me. like in a in a top. You should watch this movie, and you might have missed it. Less. I will take that very seriously. Yeah. But give me something that would be in your theoretical top ten. Theoretical top ten. Surprise me first. 
Um, well, see, I wrote down 15 movies. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you could say all 15 if you want. Theoretical surprise you. What would surprise you? Okay. Um, Basically you- anything that's not Midsommar. <laughs> <laughs> that would not surprise you. That's very comfortably sitting at number one. I had a feeling. It's like the one that I was like, okay, well, Midsommar, and then what? Um, <laughs> Lose really endured for me. You know, I, I heard only the greatest things yeah. about that, and I never circled back, and that's Lose, L-U-Z, yes. which has been frequently confused, like when you say it out loud, with Lose, which is one of my favorite movies oh. overall of the year, L-U-C-E. Yes, no, Lose as in light. Um, it's... Very, very low budget. I think it was, in fact, one of those amazing movies where you just get so annoyed because I think it was made as a school project huh. and it's just awesome enough that it got picked up for distribution. Now I'm thinking about Monument. Uh, Shake that out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, this is, it's like a possession movie and it's really artfully and theatrically told and it's definitely one of those ones that's like not for everyone. I think there's um, like a certain amount of my taste gets put into the sort of like pretentious art house category, which is weird because I just consider it weird shit. But um, it, this definitely falls more into that sphere of like it's very experimental and out there, but it's also really compelling. And it has this one scene of two people at a bar drinking this like fancy lit cocktail Ooh. and not like it's lit, but like like yeah. it's actually lit from within. Um, and it's just, there's this surreal sort of otherworldly element that it's expressed in really small details like uh-huh. that, like the cocktail they're drinking, or it's all very lo-fi. It was clearly done with no money, but done very creatively. And I just, I've never seen a movie that presents a possession story in the way that it does. I've never seen one that stages um, what are like flashbacks of a sort the way that it does. It's, I, I'm very fond of it, and it's just really endured. It was okay. something I liked when I saw it at Fantastic Fest last year, and then as the year has gone on, um, because it, it played at Fantastic Fest last year, but it came out this year, I haven't stopped thinking about yeah. it as I keep reassembling the things that stand out to me. Yeah, that's, I mean, I spoke a little bit about this last week, but that does tend to be what gets bumped up on my list, rewatchability, but also the things that are on my mind. It's like, that is like, Probably the one thing I lean on to make putting together this list easier than it usually is, is is what like what really speaks to me? What when I hear that title, do I get like all yeah. hyped and crazy and I want to talk about it again and talk about it to someone so I could spread the love? And, you know, that is largely I think it applies most to my top five in particular. <laughs> but um, moving up my list, my number nine would be Midsommar. I I really like it. I'm fascinated by Ari Aster's style and the performances in that movie or something else. And it's something that's been on my mind ever since I've seen it. It's just, I think it's lower down for me because his movies don't suit my sensibilities as well Mm -hmm. as they do yours. So as much as I appreciate it and I love it and I would watch it again in a heartbeat, I think I would put in all the ones I have above it a little quicker. Yeah, fair enough. Just taste stuff. Like I I haven't... I don't, there's, it's like stupid to try to talk about because I don't even have my own feelings about it processed. And that's kind of what I love about it is I don't know that I ever will. And it, as I expressed in the episode where I did my best attempt to explain it, it's a very personal movie for me. I relate to it very deeply. I have like huge history of my own codependency and addiction issues that are usually interlinked. And so um, that whole film is just like, get out of my head. And while you do it, stop making my trauma look so fucking beautiful because it's really offensive and and amazing. Um, So I I adore that movie and I don't like, it's really hard to think of a director who's made two movies who's clearly so gifted with actors. Mm -hmm. Like that oh, yeah. guy knows how to work with an actor. He really, really does. It's like, what, what is that? How do you... I think it's a compelling thought. Like, how do you as a director, especially a new director, convince an actor to trust you so much to take them to that place? And I know that that's the actor's job, but it's not always that demanding. Mm -hmm. Um, That's like a huge ask. Yeah. But I guess that's what actors want. They want the huge ask. I'm thinking about some of his, let me look this up before I say something that's wrong, but I'm pretty (laughs) sure his his short films before he made Hereditary were very... uh, Oh God, this is going to be the worst term to use, but very like, like actory, you know, where yeah. it was very much like putting a camera in front of an actor and letting them do totally. their thing. It's like, what was the, 
Was he the one that did the one with Rachel Brosnahan? Yes. Yes. Okay. That I'm thinking about the right things, yes. but I feel like you could see that he probably built those capabilities through those short films. And true. Then, you know, may, for all we know, maybe you know Alex Wolf and Tony Collette watched those and they're like, oh, "I believe in you, man." I w- I would think certainly somebody like Tony Collette, I, maybe, but I can't imagine her going into that blind like. Uh, again, a, a role that's that big of an yeah. ask for a first-time filmmaker. I'm certain she had to do some research on it. Yeah, that that movie is something. I still can't believe that's first feature. It's <laughs> again annoying. It blows my mind. <laughs> um, Tone it down. I was like, uh, even there's things. Something I love in a film is rewatch value, and like, um, though that rewatch itself is a big ask because it's quite it a is. long it movie is. and quite an uh, uh, emotional journey. I definitely continue to notice more and and pay more. I think it's such a richly constructed, and I can't remember the uh, set decorator's name right now, but mm-hmm. he did such a phenomenal oh, yeah. job that there's just, it's one of those movies you can watch a million times and always see something new in it's the very background. True. Which I love. I have a random question. Yeah. Is The Lighthouse on your list? Um, I don't even like, maybe I'm wrong. It doesn't read to me as horror at all. I, yeah, it honestly, that and Joker were ones that didn't initially come to mind that yeah. I see popping up on a lot of lists mm-hmm. out there. And they, they both have horror qualities to them, no doubt. Yeah. But I didn't immediately file it in that department. Joker is on my like brainstorming list yeah. here because I do find that the last, uh, what, 20, 15, 20 minutes of that movie are quite horrifying and effective. Yes. More so than I expected. I think it's even more of the movie. I think that was one of the most surprising things that I caught on my rewatch. I don't know. I just thought, you know, I thought the subway killing happened way later than it really did. That yeah. actually happens really early in the movie. Yeah. And then, and like just the downward spiral that takes place at the end, that that's a much more significant <laughs> chunk of it than I really remember. Yeah. It's a, I mean, even more so than The Lighthouse, I see that as a horror movie. Yeah. Um, I see the lighthouse as a fantasy, like yeah, kind of yeah, a dark I fantasy. That. Yeah, um, <laughs> very dark. Yeah, I, I really, I do like Joker. I don't think it. Who knows? I haven't, I haven't put anything in stone. It could wind up wherever I, it <laughs> winds up. But I, I just, um, Joker is like so close to being something really special for me, and doesn't quite, yeah, hit the hit the mark. It's real close, and I think it has really special moments, but as a cohesive whole, Mm -hmm. um, it just, like, whatever I'm looking for in the movies that stick with me, it's not quite there. Yeah, I... I liked it leaving TIFF, but I think I was so rattled by it that yeah. I couldn't appreciate even what I liked about it as much as maybe I, I can now. But on the second viewing, I think I would echo exactly what you just said, where I'm so impressed by so many things and it is very high up there for me, but it's almost like like something's missing. Yeah, Like there was something that I needed the film to give me in the end to chew on in a way that I hadn't before. And I still think that that piece isn't there, but I still think there's so many great things about like I can't believe after the second watch how hard I'm rooting for the score of that movie to Mm. not just get nominated (laughs) but maybe to win there's just so many scores a nasty motherfucker it's incredible and there's there's so much time in that movie where there's no dialogue and it's almost like like the sound everything drops out and it's all on the score to to you know sustain a transition or to sustain an emotion that you know some Joaquin Phoenix moment just left you with and it does it so beautifully and kind of perfectly the whole way through that score also like when I was watching the movie not that I think they sound the same but it did remind me of the hereditary score Mm. and that like I can listen to the hereditary score and feel bad and I feel like you could do that with the joker score too it just takes you to an emotional place it does that is intended to but it's like it's intense to be there and it's also I think that the the theme of that the main one of the main tracks is borderline going to be iconic yeah like you hear that you know exactly where it comes from and I think that kind of effect probably puts another you know you know it, it ups its chances to actually get nominated and be remembered and be one of the best of all time. It's very good. It's I, extremely good. All of it together in those last final moments, I was genuinely surprised the effect that it did ultimately have on me because yeah. it did give me like a little six sixies in my stomach. Mm-hmm. and like, Understandable. Um, in a way that I feel depressingly so often hardened to 
um, when it comes to like sort of the topics that they're addressing in the film. The real world is already so brutal and we have to take news stories that are adjacent to that on such a mm. regular basis. You know, it's part of why it became such a controversial film is yeah. because it tied into our real life stuff too intimately. So um, having to read those headlines sort of all the time, I was like, I don't, movies don't really tend to do that much anymore. Yeah. But it did. It got in there. But it did. Yeah. Um, I feel like <laughs> this is probably a terrible transition, but it also makes sense because we were talking about the score. So the Joker score is one of my favorite scores of the entire year. The score that's a notch above it and also would be number one on my list. Yeah, I knew that's and where you're going. And it's 100% going on my top 10 of the year. Yeah. It's us. Yeah, I love that there, score. So it... I think the Joker score is phenomenal. I am more likely to be listening to the Us score over and over. And that's another thing where, you know, whether you want to talk the the talk about the, you know, I got five on it remix or mm -hmm. any piece of the score throughout that entire movie, I feel like I'm at a point where if I hear even a sliver of it, I immediately go like Us. Yeah. And I just, I really, I love that movie so, so much. We were talking about it on a movie talk on Monday, just the rewatchability of certain movies. And I think Us follows in the footsteps of Get Out with that, where when you know where that movie ends, it completely changes how you look back on it. And also one of the most exciting things in general this year was the discussion and the theories that came from us because I've watched this movie more times than I'm willing to admit and it is a fascinating experience taking somebody's theory re-watching the movie with that theory in mind and seeing <laughs> new things that you never saw before mm. and it's just you know like I think it speaks to some of some of the themes and ideas of this movie like just certain judgments we make of certain people and how that might not be accurate and how easily it can be to be fooled by a certain persona that you put on and all, all of that kind of stuff and I, just like a movie that inspires you to to play along and really think and really try to put yourself in someone else's shoes that could be completely different from your own. I don't know. Like my head can go in circles over and over and over examining like every single perspective, every single side of like whether you are a tethered individual or someone who was living above ground their entire lives. It's just mm -hmm. I, I am endlessly fascinated by that scenario. I think it's very... I. I told you recently that I revisited it and it's not, again, I liked it a lot the first time I watched it. I wasn't fully obsessed with it like a lot of people are and I still not fully obsessed with it, but I think it's damn good. And my, I think the reason I'm not fully obsessed with it is interestingly converse to what you were just saying, which is I think it answers way too much. Um, and I personally, my preference are films that are, I guess, slightly more ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And there's a line where you become annoying with your ambiguity, but, um, I, I could have done with a little less monologuing, let's say. Okay. Um, so it doesn't quite conjure in me the same like theory thing because I feel like it answers all of its own questions very uh, summarily. But I do enjoy rewatching it just because it's real fun. It is real fun. I think my my theory questions as far as whether or not the information is revealed is a little more limited. I think mm -hmm. it's more of the challenge of trying to, you know, really understand and feel where someone's coming from. I think that's the thing. It's like, you know, a brief spoiler warning if you haven't seen us, but I want to bring this point up in particular. It's like, you know, the bit about you know, is, is that her real son or is it Pluto kind of thing? Yeah. Because having that in mind and going back and rewatching it and then thinking about, you know, like who knows what about who's up there and how that was all, I don't, I don't know, just all of that. I, I like thinking about how that character changes if it was one way or the other. <laughs> and I think that's all really fun. I mean, we talked about this on the podcast. Yeah. I don't really buy that theory at all, but I, it's, it's I fun to think about. The more I watch it, the more I do. I don't buy it at all. I don't think it works thematically and it's fine. It's fine. And we don't need to get <laughs> People are really mad at me for saying that I don't believe it. I just don't. I don't think it's what the movie's trying to say. Um, but I do love that the actors are so good. They're I'm so trying to like good. not get yelled at for my opinions. I what don't know. They, I just like did Shahadi Wright Joseph get a Critics Choice nomination? I'm oh, I sure hope she that, did because she was terrifying. Critics Choice. I think she's the scariest one in the movie by now. I'm rewatching it. She's great. I really think that she was even scarier than Lupita. And Lupita is freaking freaky. If Lupita gets that Academy Award nomination, I just want to have like a whole party just yeah. for that nomination. I, I want to see it, it happen. Even with um some of the recent uh, nominations she's getting, I don't know. Maybe. I think she has a real chance now. 
Maybe. Just, yeah, Shahadi Wright Joseph is in the category for Best Young Actor, Actress of the Critics' Choice Awards. I'm so happy Good, with how this... Uh, <laughs> like, I sa I've said this before, but usually when I vote for things, because I'm in BFCA, I usually... Do, like, I don't pick the things. I don't love the things that most... Uh, most critics love, I guess. I don't know. Or most people in that, that voting body pick. So I always pick like really obscure things and then my nominations never pan out. <laughs> but I feel like the best young actor, actress category, there are so many here that I was really rooting for. Nice. I don't know. I'm just so excited to look at this category right now. Good. Um, do you want to name another one? Because I just named one of mine. Um, sure. Yes. I will say that for us, I really find it before we move on because I did want to talk about this just that he is such a sort of sort of in the sense that I was talking about how ridiculously good with actors Ari Aster oh, is yeah I find that well he's also very good with actors although I think he maybe doesn't quite I don't watch that and go like why would someone want to do that? <laughs> like when I see Ari Aster's performance he's asking well, yeah. for, I'm like, why would you need that therapy? Like, why would you do that to yourself? Um, I, whereas when I see what he gives, uh, what Jordan Peele gives actors to do, I think he gives them really fun roles uh -huh. kind of. Um, but I do think that what us proved that get out showed is like his technical command mm -hmm. and his use of, color and texture and sound and all of the precise elements of filmmaking are something that he has such a complete grasp of and only improved with his second feature. Yeah. Which I think is really quite phenomenal when your first feature is Get Out. There's there's so many movies this year that I think exhibit that kind of precision because as yeah. you were describing that, I'm like, oh, describe Knives Out the same way. Oh, totally. So like when you look yes. around. But that, that's like, what, his seventh feature or something? It, no, it is. Yeah. It is. I think second Fifth, feature sixth, is, a, is a little a little different scenario. Yeah. But it's just, you know, I, I don't know. I think above all else, I just get really excited when we're talking about the best directors of the year. When I yeah. see a movie and I'm like, no one could have done that like you can. Yeah. That's the thing that really gets that. me pumped. And I think I would apply that statement to both Knives Out and Us. I would agree with that. And, and many others. It's a beautiful movie. And that, like, I... Get Out was a good looking movie. Us, I think, is a beautiful yeah. movie. I mean, you can pretty much freeze frame every single yeah. frame of that movie and get stunning imagery. But then also, I would say the large majority of it, you could find something of meaning somewhere in the front, like of great meaning too. Probably. And to achieve that is real. Like to achieve that and not just, you know, because coverage is important, but when it's not just coverage for the sake of coverage and it's more than that, yeah. that really lets you sink your teeth into every single second of a film. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. It's a lot of it's fun. It's cool. Uh, what would I what would I throw out there? All right. Curveball. I think I think this will end up in the top ten. I'm this is another one that's stuck with me and really grown on me. And Wait, can I ask? Do you think it's gonna be on my list? No. Okay. But maybe. Velvet Buzzsaw. Oh, no. Yeah, not. I didn't think so. <laughs> no. I watched it. It was it was fine. Yeah. No, I really like it. And it just continues to get higher and higher in my mind. Uh, I When I watched it at the top of the year, I was like, yeah, all right, fine. Um, but I think about it a lot throughout the year. And when I think about it, it makes me chuckle. Okay. Um, and I, I appreciate... <laughs> I appreciate everyone's like several levels of extra in that movie. I find it really amusing, especially <laughs> I loved, Jake Gyllenhaal. I loved your reaction to that just now. That was so genuine. <laughs> I was thinking about Jake Gyllenhaal's like everything he does in that movie is just way over the top and so way too much. And same for Tony Collette. And I just I love it. It yeah. really works for me, and it really has stuck with me and amused me all year. Um, there, there are certain parts that that are still on my mind, but I think I, I have maintained what you described after your first year. Yeah. I'm like, fine, yeah, okay, fair That's enough. <laughs> I don't know why. It just, um, I think because it's so deliciously ridiculous, it has really stuck with me, and I like that it's, um, I don't know, it's Nightcrawler. Their first movie together is a yeah. more effective horror movie. It's scarier. I Nightcrawler would say was one of my favorites of that so, year. Absolutely. I, that's one of my favorites of the decade. Like, I love that movie and I do find it scary, but it's in the like genuinely yeah, scary yeah. way. It's in that turn on the news and feel bad kind of scary mm -hmm. way. Um, this is, well, I guess, quite literally. Uh, this, yes, this is not as scary or sad. It's more like amusing. Mm -hmm. 
um, but I did enjoy the the. I don't know what the word is. It's not crass, but the sort of like bluntness of the scares, like yeah. the thing that eats your arm. That's so ridiculous. Or like huh. this, the robot is genuinely unnerving. Yeah, yeah. that is an unnerving design. Uh, the, her being like covered in paint or whatever. That's so ridiculous. I don't know. It just really it, it works for me. Yeah, you know, your little pitch right now is actually yeah. making me want to rewatch it. <laughs> you should. It's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, this isn't really a curveball given how much we've spoken about it, but I think you're not going to see this on as many lists, mm. maybe. Um, and I'm jumping way up towards my... It's, this is my number five. Oh, I'm it, way out of order. We've already talked oh, yeah. about both of our number ones. It's, it's Escape Room. Oh, I love Escape I, Room. I, I don't know. I just, I really think Escape Room needs to, and I'm glad, I'm glad it did well and it justified the green light for a sequel and everything. But I think this movie needs to be widely known, not just as like, oh, like another cool horror concept that, you know, hit it big in January and it's going to like chug along. Just talking about directing and craftsmanship and great performances with a with a scenario that really needed it i think that this movie kind of ticks every single box and mm. you know it sounds i mean actually i'll throw i'll throw ready or not into this scenario as well because ready or not is my number four and it's like when you say oh hide and seek the horror movie it's like of course hollywood needs to make a hide and seek the horror <laughs> movie and of course hollywood needs to make escape room the horror movie because of how hot escape rooms are but you take those ideas and you and Yes, I can't deny the fact that they come with a, a very appealing, easy to sell hook, but then you put them in the hands of filmmakers that kind of, you know, bring so much more out of them than you would expect and cast individuals who are incredible. Like Escape Room has a great ensemble, it does. a really, really great ensemble. And every single room in that is so clever. It's so suspenseful. It's got that Final Destination vibe, which everyone knows that I love where you know, like you're waiting, you feel the ticking clock every mm -hmm. sense of the way, every sense Jeez, uh, I can't speak. This every is like, cent of the dollar. I know what you meant. Every cent of the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> <what I> mean. <laughs> every step of the way. You had to put a P at the end of that. Yeah. Um, I see. I got there eventually. No, it's fine. But right. I mean, really, the only little element that didn't work for me in escape room was the button on the end. But the whole journey, otherwise, was so so mm. good. And I really do want to see. I want to see escape room too, and I want to see them continue it because I think that especially if you have Adam Robitel and his team that worked on this one, they could d design escape rooms like for for years oh, to come. 100%. And this could be a great thing to turn into like a really long running franchise. I think it's fun as heck. I, I super dig it. I think I was, when we did our uh, best of the year so far, I was coming in very hard for that one. Yeah. And I just, it's peak fun for all the reasons you just said. And we both, you know, adore the Final Destination franchise. And that is exactly the box that's ticking mm -hmm. for me. Um, and it's also, I think it's fun that it's partly sci-fi in certain ways. Like when you think about the construct of the rooms itself yeah, yeah. and what it takes to make that happen, that's a bit of a science fiction element that I find really thrilling is mm -hmm. like, um, what could possibly be the next design and, and what would it take to make that design come true? And, um, I do like, yeah, the button's what it is, but yeah. that, 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 that gives it a franchise of franchisability my goodness sense we should record we these them. later in the day <laughs> <laughs> but then i'd be out of coffee yes. and maybe it would be worse every cent of the dollar <laughs> it's worth it on this show uh yeah but i super dig it i super like the performances and i said this before and i'll say it again give deborah ann wool more kick-ass oh, roles yes please she's so good I, I, and as you were describing it i kept thinking i can't believe how like different every room is. Yeah. It's like every time we got to a room, I didn't expect the next room to be as like crazy as it was. It's a lot of fun. It's like, I mean, Cube is fun for that reason, but it, it makes Cube looks like 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 a little child's toy because <laughs> in Cube, it's like, is it gonna be acid or is it gonna be lasers? What's it gonna be? And this is like a whole yeah. artistic, gorgeous design of insanity. It's like set piece gold. Yeah. I love that. And I, I'm hugely passionate, passionate about production design. Yeah. So I love getting has, that to be like a flex of part of the film's construct. Filled with it. Yeah. I feel like we should just sidestep over to ready or not. Cause I already uttered it. Yeah, sure. And we're, it's definitely <laughs> it's, on everyone's it's my, list. It's my number four. Nice. That, like, 
cool movie. It's I so still, much fun. I still can't believe that Hide and Seek, the movie, worked. Oh, yeah. But I love, love, love the mythology they build around that game. And Samara Weaving is, you know, she, she's not even that new to the industry anymore. She's had quite a few performances to her name that, you know, make her a wow-worthy ri- rising star. But... You know, this one in particular, I feel like this should be the nudge to that next Mm -hmm. level. She's so good. She's such a good anchor for that kind of scenario. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. I mean, and especially because... I just fear not enough people saw Ready or Not. Maybe I'm just har- no, harping on the. True. Maybe I'm just harping on the box office too much because I think it is doing fairly well on home release. But yeah. I just want everybody to know about her and Ready or Not. People keep bringing it up to me in my real life, good. so I know that it has reached. Good. Um, and she comes up. I think this will absolutely be, and especially because when we had the directors on, they said that the studio asked them to look at her. That says to me that she's well on her way. Um, especially because they worked with her on three billboards in which she had a good but minuscule role minuscule that made a big impression and it's like when you look at because when you look at how little screen time she gets in that and just like how how challenging and complex that character is in in order to make that character have a good impression or Mm -hmm. like leave any impression for that matter i I don't know Mm -hmm. that was one of those roles where i think she had like that much and made that much out of it exactly what i'm saying which is why the studio remembered her and why it's so impressive that they would then push for her to have this leading role given what she had was like oh three minutes of screen Mm -hmm. time or something like she's she's impressing the right people which is studio heads directors and audiences that's like what you need and just wait for guns akimbo (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm not sure that's gonna have quite the reach but maybe maybe not quite the reach but i feel like anybody who is like you know like how much range does tomorrow weaving have like go watch that one (laughs) next and you're you're not gonna believe what you're watching i've said it before i'll say it again she's like she's bound for a super suit it's gonna happen she's perfect for it i i would not be surprised if that was a casting story we're covering in the near future exactly all right what else you got on your list? What else do I have? All right, let's see. So we've done a lot of, oh, well, I'm like, should we do the obvious? <gasps> we're like in obvious yes. favorites territory. So let's let's get Gatory. Yeah, I yeah. thought you were going that route. <laughs> yeah. This movie's so good. I was like, what's it's left so in my, good. yeah, it's Crawl, guys. You know it's Crawl. You know we can't shut up about Still, it. Still, it's a, like, Crawl's not just in my top horror movies of the year list. Oh, it's me like either. firmly in my top 10. Same. And I think it might be one of my favorite uh, communal viewing experiences all year. Absolutely. I freaking adore that movie. I can't tell you how many times between when we saw it and when it was finally available to watch at home that I watched the trailer. I must have watched that trailer. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> 50 plus times just because a it's a really well edited yeah. trailer and it you can listen to it like a song and it works and i'm a music junkie so that became a problem i like got uh i got crawl stuck in my head the crawl trailer it's not the worst problem that i have oh no but it was weird <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you can be like out with your friends and be like let me just throw this on the playlist for a second i would have been head. okay with it yeah sometimes when people are driving in my car with me it's like i have a playlist playing of all you know alt rock music but then all of a sudden either one of the us tracks or <laughs> halloween will kick in nice. and they're like what the fuck is going on yeah yeah everyone in your car is so surprised by the horror horror flip. i mean it's a weird thing that blasting <laughs> in your car it's either one of those or it's march of the resistance Okay, now that one would throw me off a little bit. Yeah, I really like that track. I it's hope, good. I hope they play it in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> I just feel like having been in your car many times, that one would be one where I'd be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I can't explain it. Um, Makes me cry. Oh, that's nice. It's also weird. <laughs> music, that's, music makes people cry. That's like a thing. It's a bona fide thing. Don't feel too weird. Thanks. Um, I feel better. <laughs> I love Crawl and the... Yes, it got stuck in my head like a song because ultimately I love the movie so Mm -hmm. much and I wanted something to keep me fed until I could watch it again. But I just, it's so simple is the thing and that's what I love about it Mm -hmm. so much. It is the same scene basically over and over again with higher stakes each time and the very construct is so simple. You're stuck with alligators in rising water. That's all you need. That's all you need. It's, wow, beautiful. it's just so well done too. Yes. I, I really like the fact that there's not too many frills 
storytelling wise and it's just like even though it is a very simple concept that doesn't necessarily mean it's a simple production and i oh. watched so much of that behind the scenes yeah. stuff i mean just to have rushing water come through their house set what what they go and also like barry pepper and kaya scott Alaria, what they must have gone through shooting a movie like mm -hmm. that where they're essentially like drenched in and water the entire time i don't know every single thing just wows me about that production but you know i mean i guess if we're, we're briefly spoiling things I will never forget this particular moment watching a movie all year. So again, spoiler warning. I was very into it the whole time, but that point where she's got the damn gun yeah. in her hand and she's in the egg room and she has the gun and all of a sudden the gator comes out and fucking bites her. I Now I'm cursing. Yeah. And I just get so excited and it bites her arm and she's shooting the thing. Like my butt was out of my seat. Yeah. And from that point on, I was uncontrollable. Thank God the first time I saw this movie, it was only me and one other person <laughs> in it because the two of us were equally as vocal and losing our minds from that point on. I love that. It was I, so, so good. What's crazy is you're like, spoiler, 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 spoiler. That's definitely in the trailer for some reason. Yeah, it Why? is. Why? I don't necessarily think the moment's in the trailer, but I know the shot of her with the gun in the oh, room is in. it's for sure in there. With Again, I've biting? watched it 50 plus wow. times. Okay, yes. I guess it's not a spoiler. <laughs> 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 no, it uh, should be though, and no, you were correct. It it's just, I don't understand why they'd put that in the trailer. They put in like all the good scares in the trailer. Fools. <laughs> Also, clearly didn't advertise it enough, yeah, but that's I know, a whole I other know. rant. I could go into that for um, a while. But yes, I love that moment. I love so many, so many moments. All of them are like an interesting combination of you absolutely know what's going to happen and you can't believe it when it finally does. It's like... <laughs> Of course she was gonna get her arm bit. That's what you're afraid of the whole scene. You just didn't think they'd actually do it. I love that movie. I can't, yeah. I'm so excited about that. And I just wanna like keep spreading the love for that one. Um, we're, we're running out of time I know. Here. So I'll just give another shout out to my number six of the year. It's Dr. Sleep. Okay, um, nice. There's there's another one, a recent release that I've I've watched quite a few times at this point. And I think a lot of my love just comes from my intense love of the source material. But also one of the things that I found most impressive about that is one of the biggest questions going into it is how is Flanagan going to honor the book, which doesn't necessarily connect to Kubrick's The Shining movie, but also honor the movie because that's where, where most people will get the foundation from. And the fact that he takes a big swing with that, and I think it works pretty well, is so impressive to me. I will not say the entire movie works perfectly, but a lot of it works really well. And I think one of the best things that we got on the big screen all year is Rebecca Ferguson as Rose the Hat. And if if tomorrow they announced a true not movie which is never going to happen because the damn thing made 14 million dollars opening yeah. weekend which still blows my mind i would be all for it it's interesting i need to revisit that one uh, because i literally forgot about it when i was putting these together um not many people are talking about it in best of the year context well i just like i mean that's fine for them but i did a whole junket for it and i've read the book multiple times yeah. and like i can't believe it i straight up forgot about okay. it so that doesn't speak that highly of yeah, how it's holding up for me but it's interesting because i did like it and i i'm surprised maybe that i forgot about it um but also maybe not so surprised that's it i'm like it's working fair. through a lot of feelings right here okay I'm, that's I'm, what we're here for yeah help you out with that <laughs> this, this is Tell therapy it, right <laughs> um yeah, I I do like it a lot, but I obviously need to rewatch it if I've already like two months after I went to the Stanley forgotten mm -hmm. about it. I I don't know that anything in it like I don't know. I just, uh, is is scary the way that I maybe would like it no. to be? Like I think it it's a good. I think the baseball boy scene is pretty scary. Okay, yeah, that's pretty. Upsetting. That's really scary. That is <laughs> upsetting. Fair enough. Um, that scene's really scary and and a scene as far as like you know visual style and architecture goes that really wows me every time i watch it is the um is the abra versus rose I scene i think that say. is just oh yeah. it's so beautifully shot. something like that shouldn't work and i am just like i'm mesmerized when that scene kicks in yeah i liked it i need to watch it again i wish they had um sent screeners for that one mm -hmm. but yeah that would have been nice Let's see, what else do I want to make sure we hit before we leave? Uh, okay, well, 
I've already talked about these 45 million times on this podcast, so I don't want Even to just name keep dropping. That's right what I'm going to do. Valuable. Yeah, so One Cut of the Dead and Climax yes. are both just like, yes. if you haven't seen them. Climax wound up a lot higher on my overall year nice. list than I thought it would. It's very good. Because like you've watched the crawl thing over and over. Yeah. Do you know how many times I've watched that opening dance sequence? <laughs> oh my like God, it's amazing. It's a stupid amount of times. And it's on Amazon Prime, that it's, I know for sure, because I also have revisited the dance sequence. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love that movie and it is truly a work of like phenomenal camera mm -hmm. work. You just like mind blowing yeah, camera work. It really is. Um, and physical performance and, uh, from Sofia Batella, emotional performance. Definitely. She's so good. Uh, but I, I do love that movie and I do love one cut of the dead, which might end up on my like mm -hmm. whole year top 10. Maybe. I don't know. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um, and Tigers Are Not Afraid, which yes, is I, like... I have Tigers Are Not Afraid on my list. Big time, cry your eyes out, levels of sad. One more I have to add because it's my number three on the list and it's, it's just, it looks like it's just getting bumped out of my top 10 at this point, but I still mm -hmm. love it. Uh, Pet Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's also one of my favorite movie moments of the year because you, you know the story. We were at South by Southwest and I was so excited to be covering La Llorona and that back to back. And I didn't hate La Llorona by any means, but I was disappointed. I can't fucking process that that movie came out this year yeah isn't that crazy the fact that we were like i know because i was there that we went to south by for both of those yeah. but i just like my brain broke a little bit so <laughs> this is nothing to do with horror but the movie that someone said that to me and and it yeah. broke my brain a little was the upside came out this year oh, wow yeah and i'm like <laughs> what <laughs> no way and yeah it did come out this year wow um but Pet Cemetery. I'll never forget how I felt when we were walking back to our hotel and just how excited I was. Yeah. I really do. And I know it's not the popular or common opinion. I think that that is such a well-crafted adaptation where they kept just enough of the book, mm -hmm. added just enough new elements. And I applaud them all day for just like digging into the darkness and the meanness of that book. I'm surprised how far they pushed it. I think all the performances, particularly Amy Simons and Jate Lawrence are really damn good in that movie. And that is one of those ones. I like, it's weird to get so excited about something so nasty, mm -hmm. but that's one that got under my skin in the best way. And yeah, as sick as it sounds, I carried it around with me for a very, very long time and still have it with me. And I'm kind of glad. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm very, very impressed. I, I like that movie a lot. Obviously, ever since we saw it, I did not like it quite as much yeah. as you, but I do like it a lot. And my, like the, the deal breaker for me remains what they did with Judd, which I just hate. But everything else I really A like. criticism that I definitely understand, yeah. but something that didn't affect my experience as yeah. much. He's like my favorite character in the book. I get so that. I get I like, that. That's kind of a deal breaker. He's a, but he's an especially well-developed character the in the book. Works really well. And I would say that those acting performances are on par with some of the horror acting performances that are getting more attention this year. Yep. Um, and I just... I'm still quite surprised by the intensity of the dislike for it. Yeah. The only reason why I might not be surprised is because of how dark it is. And I understand it's but like the source material is super dark. So yeah. I don't get that. But I feel like I know Stephen King that, you know, his books are, are very well read, but I feel mm. like it's not a one for one with the wide movie going public. And it's like, I think of the cinema score for that movie, which I think might be a C plus. And I can understand someone like feeling crappy after that movie, just because of, of what happens in it. Mm. And then, you know, ticking off a box on that sheet that isn't particularly high. So I can understand that bringing down the audience score, so to speak. I definitely, like, if you haven't read the book, fully get that. Oh, my God, yeah. It's people who have and are, like, not feeling it. I get me. Oh. I mean, maybe if you're, like, a super loyalist, but I don't. I think it's a very I, good adaptation. It's one I don't of my know. favorite of all of his books. Me, too. So is Dr. Sleep, really. And I, I was very happy with how both were adapted. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's interesting that it has not come up at all in this so conversation. It, it, I mean, to be fair, it is right behind Dr. Sleep for it's, me. It's I prefer Dr. Sleep, but, you know, it it's a little lower because I think overall it doesn't work as well. But there's certain sequences in the new It movie that I really, really love. Yeah. Like, I really love the whole first act of, the, act of that movie. It's the, it's the second act that I start to get like, oh, I don't know if maybe that was the best way to do it. But yeah. 
I still I still enjoy watching the entire thing. I've think, seen that movie too many times, and with a runtime like that, <laughs> the fact that I have seen it as many times speaks to how much I enjoy it at least. Way too much of a runtime, out of their minds. Yeah, but I, did, I think where I've ended up on it is like, it's a really good horror comedy. Um, okay, which I wasn't expecting it to be. But that's where I've landed on it, is I enjoy it more for its comedy than its horror in most cases. There are maybe like two scenes that are effectively creepy for me, but overall what works is when the characters are being funny. All right. Um, But I do, I do still enjoy it and I have revisited it, which is interesting because it is super freaking long. It is very long. All right. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything that I wanted to shout out because we are, well, I do, we mentioned it, but Little Monsters was a whole heck of a lot of fun. That's in like my honorable mention section. I like Sweetheart a lot. Oh yeah. See this one, I would have been sad to not bring up. I still really freaking like Annabelle Comes Home. Oh, Annabelle Comes Home. I like it a lot. Annabelle Comes Home is in my little honorable mention section, as is The Hole in the Ground, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, Ma Freaks, which is kind of horror adjacent, Happy Death Day to You, Joker, and The Perfection. Oh, yeah, the perfection. Yeah. I almost forgot about that just because, I don't know, sometimes I think it's it's a little difficult to merge theatrical and streaming. <laughs> I, I like the perfection. That's one of those wild ones that had such intense buzz out yes. of Fantastic Fest that it, it, I don't think it was quite what I was expecting. No. But it is, it's a wild ride and it's it worth is. seeing. I quite like that. Yeah. All right. I think we do have to close this out. Yes. Um, but we leave it to you. We love hearing from you guys. I mean, f- first off, I believe this is our last episode of the year. Oh my goodness. This is it. Is it? Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy for, Merry I mean, a, a happy, happy holidays, uh, a very happy and safe new year to everybody. But, you know, another year of witching hour in the can now. And I, it's wow. just like, I can't reiterate how much of a joy this is to record with you, Haley, yes. and, and to get to interact with our wonderful viewers and having this be our year where we did our first live episode. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I'm like filled with so much hope for this show in the new year. We've had so many wonderful movies to celebrate. So just a, a very, you know, warm, heartfelt thank you to everybody out there for supporting us with what we do, because I think I could speak for both of us where we, we love sitting at this table and talking hard. Absolutely. Always. It's my favorite. Um, with, with like the new year in mind, can you think of, I just had one and it literally flew out of my head. So if you can't, <gasps> I don't blame you, but what's your favorite horror movie you've seen that hasn't been released yet and that's coming out next year? Oh, The Lodge. Okay. That cool. was easy because I was very upset when they moved in. I wasn't <laughs> able to include it on my best of the year list. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm going to go with, I think it, it wasn't the one I was thinking. So whatever movie you are, we'll see you in 2020. <laughs> uh, but The Platform. That would be up there for me too. Oh, so many good things. Good things to come. Good things on the witching hour, good things in your theaters (laughs) and on your streamers. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode and for watching us and listening to us all year. You have officially survived the witching hour.